The polls are open across the country. You have to get your ballots in. In Colorado, that means getting to a drop box or voting center before the 7 p.m. deadline. That could mean waiting in line to vote in person. I always wait till election day. But no matter how you vote in Colorado, officials say you can count on a secure election. That's why we're the gold standard of the nation. Thanks for joining us on Denver 7 News at 11 on this election day. I'm Jessica Porter. Colorado was poised to eclipse a voter turnout from the 2016 election. As of last night's count, more than 2.8 million ballots have been tallied. That's just 20,000 shy of all ballots cast in the last presidential election. Denver 7 is bringing you team coverage of the 2020 election. Nicole Brady and Micah Smith are both standing by as voters line up to cast their ballots, but let's send it over to ABC's Faith Abube. More than 100 million voters have already made their decision in this race, but today millions more are standing in line at polling places all across the country waiting for their voices to be heard. Former Vice President Joe Biden coming into election day ahead in most polls. Starting his day stumping with members of the local Carpenters Union in his hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania. But even this morning, his campaign taking no chances. It's time for Donald Trump to pack his bags and go home. We're done. Yesterday, his campaign barnstorming the battlegrounds of Pennsylvania and Ohio. We can put an end to a president that has failed to protect this nation. After a long and bitter campaign season, Biden finishing with a message of hope, but still attacking the president for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're going to beat this virus. We're going to get it under control. And the first step, the first step to beating this virus is beating Donald Trump. In a new internal memo obtained by the Washington Post, White House Task Force Coordinator Dr. Deborah Birx saying we're entering the most concerning and the most deadly phase of this pandemic. But at a closing rally in Michigan, President Trump with a vastly different message. That ends the pandemic. And it will end anyway. They hate it when I say we're rounding the corner. It's going to end anyway, but the vaccine will make it go a lot quicker. Trump calling into Fox News this morning, projecting confidence that he'll win. I don't know what the chances are. I don't know how they rate the chances, but I think we have a very solid chance of winning. And I think a lot of that has to do with the tremendous crowd size. While also grappling with the thought of losing. The concept of losing to this guy. Oh, you better, you better get out there and vote tomorrow. I will be so angry. I'll never come back. New numbers from the U.S. Elections Project show out of nearly 100 million early votes cast, 47.9% were Democrats and 41.8% Republicans. Trump's campaign banking on a huge election day turnout to win. Voters, meanwhile, ready for the final count. I'll be happy when it's over with. I'm really tired of all the BS. And one thing about record turnout is that uh, it, it's still good for democracy, but somebody has to count those ballots. Election experts telling ABC News they expect it to take longer than usual for the final results to come in. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Back to you. Faith, thank you. And we know some of you like to vote on Election Day. Before you go, you should know you don't have to go to your neighborhood polling location. You can go to any voting center in your county. And some counties have wait times listed online. In Denver, you can find a map of all locations and their wait times on denvervotes.org. Other counties have different formats. Adams has all 20 of its locations and wait times in a list format, so you can find the location with the shortest wait. With close to 3 million ballots already counted in Colorado, your in-person voting waits will be much shorter than lines we've seen in other states. Denver 7's Nicole Brady is live in Douglas County. Nicole, you saw a short line right when the polls opened at 7 a.m., but no major wait times where you are. No, really not long at all to vote, Jessica, today. It's been smooth here at the Lone Tree Motor Vehicle Division. This is one of several polling sites here in Douglas County. Mostly we've seen people just driving up to drop their ballot in the drop box. But we have also seen some voting the old fashioned way or the traditional way, if you want to call it. And they've told us that even despite the pandemic, uh, it looks pretty normal inside like any typical election day, just with masks on. But I think the big story coming out of this election 
election year in Colorado is going to be how many votes have already been cast. The votes are already being processed and counted here in Douglas County. Almost 80% of ballots were returned before Election Day and other counties are very close to that. We asked a few of these in person voters why they prefer this method. Some said it's just the way they feel like they have to do it, almost treating today like a holiday. I feel like Election Day is a big celebration regardless of who wins. Um, it's just embodying like what America is about and that people have the, the right to cast their vote for the candidate that they want. And she certainly dressed the part today in red, white and blue. Now we have not had any major problems reported at any polling locations in Douglas County, but I will expect it to get busier throughout the day. Some of those real procrastinators, those waiting till after work, perhaps that could lead to some longer lines, but it only took some of the in-person voters about a half hour today to get in and out. We're live in Lone Tree, Nicole Brady, Denver 7. Nicole, thank you. Election security is always a priority, and this year there's some added transparency. This is a live look inside the Denver Elections Office where ballots are being counted right now. And you can watch the county's network of cameras live streaming on YouTube all day as ballots are processed. And the way our election process is set up makes Colorado the safest state to cast your ballot in. Our system is so safe uh, because we used a voter verified paper ballot. Uh, paper ballots, of, of course, are uh, much more resistant from cyber attack because they can't be hacked. Uh, if you do choose to vote on a piece of voting equipment, that's not connected to the Internet. And we do a risk limiting audit after the election uh, to make sure that there's a st statistical degree of certainty in the results. Despite our secure election process, we're always on the lookout for scammers trying to sway your vote. Several people reached out to contact Denver 7 after getting a call from political parties about a problem with their ballots. Denver 7's Micah Smith is live in Denver. Micah, people were obviously worried this was a scam tr or trying to steal their vote. They were, Jessica, and obviously that's a natural reaction, but that's not the case with these phone calls. It may seem suspicious to get a phone call from a political party telling you that there's an issue with your ballot, but in many of these cases, those phone calls were legitimate. Again, we had several viewers reach out to Contact 7 saying the Democratic or Republican Party told them that there was a problem with their ballot and they wanted to know what was going on. So we reached out to Denver's Clerk and Recorder's Office and Denver Clerk and Recorder Public Information Officer Alton Dillard told Denver 7 political parties are also tracking ballots and it's very possible that if they see an issue with your ballot, the party may reach out before the clerk and recorder's office notifies you. They also have access to see if anyone has a ballot that needs to be cured. And so sometimes uh, voters will hear from a party prior to getting the notification from us. In Denver, if you're signed up for ballot trace, you will actually get a notification as soon as we notice the issue. As polls open this morning, we talked to one voter who says she plans to use ballot trace to make sure there are no issues with the ballot she dropped off. Yes, I have the little stubs that they kept. My friends have been tracking theirs, so can't hurt. Better safe than sorry. If there are any issues with your ballot, the clerk and recorder's office will send you a letter the same day they notice that issue. But if you have any questions at all about if your ballot was accepted, the best thing you can do, the quickest answer you can get is by calling the clerk and recorder's office. Reporting live, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Micah, thank you. And you can count on Denver 7 to bring you live results. We'll have complete coverage from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. tonight. And at 5 p.m., we'll check in with ABC News here on air as polls close on the East Coast. And starting at 6 p.m., join us for our uninterrupted coverage on our streaming platforms with live results and analysis throughout the night. Just search Denver 7 on your device of choice, Roku, Amazon Fire, Android TV, or Apple TV. We'll also have a special edition of Denver 7 News at 10 tonight. Turning now to the coronavirus in Colorado, and unfortunately, we're still not seeing new cases drop here in our state. The Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment reports an additional 2,237 cases confirmed in the last 24 hours. Those new cases plus a drop in testing has sent our positivity rating skyrocketing. It's now more than double the 5% threshold set by the World Health Organization. 
and our hospital capacity is slowly dwindling. With 858 patients getting hospital care right now, 9% of all hospital beds are in use by coronavirus patients right now. And coronavirus is working its way through the Broncos front office. CEO Joe Ellis and GM John Elway both tested positive for the virus. Both were not feeling well this weekend, causing Ellis to sit out the game against the Chargers. The Broncos say Ellis and Elway were infected outside the office. Several members of the Broncos coaching staff have also tested positive this week. Firefighters are making even more progress at the Cameron Peak Fire in Larimer County. It is now 89% contained and holding at just under 209,000 acres. All Larimer County evacuations were lifted yesterday for both the Cameron Peak and East Troublesome Fire victims. The East Troublesome Fire is about 37% contained at just under 194,000 acres. And you can still donate to our Denver 7 Gibbs Fund for families who lost so much during this wildfire season. Just head to the DenverChannel.com, click Denver 7 Gibbs, and under the drop down menu, select Help Colorado Wildfire Victims. So far, you've helped raise more than $220,000.